Hello, everyone. Welcome to our very first episode of Wildcat Dash presented by Dash Sports TV. And I figured since this is our very first episode of Wildcat Dash that we'd quickly go ahead and introduce ourselves. I am Jacob Minuti. I'm the sports editor for the Arizona Daily Wildcat. I'm a junior at the University of Arizona, and I'm joined here today with my co-host, Ryan Wall. Ryan, would you like to give a little introduction about yourself before we get started? Yeah, I'm a sophomore at the University of Arizona, and I'm also a sports reporter for the Daily Wildcat. Awesome. So let's just hop right into it. It's been about a week and a half since the Pac-12 postponed its fall sports. I've been saying that phrase so many times, it's starting to you know, sound really weird in my head, uh, postpone fall sports. So uh, yeah, it's been about a week and a half, and we're just finally starting to see the aftershock of the news. And Arizona got hit pretty hard with that aftershock. Um, the Schooler brothers, both Colin and Brendan Schooler, announced on social media this past Wednesday that they are entering the transfer portal. And of course, Colin is a three-year starter. Brendan, who transferred from Arizona, or excuse me, transferred to Arizona from Oregon a few months back. The Schooler brother era is over before it even started. So, I mean, Ryan, I don't even think I can put into words how big of a loss this is for Arizona to lose Colin Schooler. Um, I mean, how do you see Arizona rebounding from this? I mean, it's going gonna, it's gonna to be tough. Uh, the defense last year struggled as it is, uh, losing six out of the 12 games, giving up 40 or more points. And with, along with Tony Fields, the, the defense is, is going to have to rely on a lot of young, a lot of young players to uh, get some reps in there. Yeah, I mean, I remember at the beginning, or uh, as when we were prepping for the show a few days ago, um, we wanted to talk about how Tony Fields leaving was going to be a big loss for Arizona. And that conversation was most likely going to end with us saying that Colin Schooler was going to need to carry the entire load. But now he's gone, too. So, I mean, the whole at inside linebacker is just huge now. I mean, I'm looking at this depth chart right now and Anthony Pandy, Kylan Wilborn, Jalen Harris, Darian Clark, Eddie Sayamahu, Kaneba Watson and Derek Morning. Now, that's a pretty solid linebacker core. There's just one issue, is that there's only one of them that can play inside linebacker, and that's Anthony Pandy. All these other guys are outside linebackers, the pass rushers. So it's going to be a lot of plug and play for sure at that linebacker position. I know Darian Clark played a little bit of inside linebacker in high school and racked up a bunch of uh, tackles when he was there. But, I mean, just looking at his height and weight, he seems a bit undersized for inside linebacker. Eddie Sayamahu, on the other hand, seems to kind of fit that role of an inside linebacker a little bit more. Um, he played safety in high school. Um, he's also pretty big as well. He's 6'3", 235. So he's pretty familiar with playing in open space, and I think he has the size to be able to do that. But the fact of the matter is, is that it's going to be a lot of plug and play uh, at both the linebacker position and the safety position because, I mean, you can even make the argument that you can move a safety down into linebacker. But, I mean, Arizona doesn't really have – the depth chart or the facilities to do that either. So, I mean, they're just incredibly thin at both linebacker and safety. It's going to be a real interesting thing to see on uh, next season. But I do think no matter how bad this team might be next season, whether they win a bowl game, whether they go to a bowl game, no matter how many wins they have, I firmly believe that Kevin Sumlin will still be the quarterback or excuse me, the head coach of this team. And why do I think that recruiting class? Arizona now has 20 commits to its 2021 recruiting class, which is pretty solid. But the reason why I think that is so impressive, because if you wind back the clocks to May 1st, you're going to see that what Arizona had zero, yes, zero commits to its 2021 class. They were one of the last power five schools to get a commit. Uh, I actually think they were the, uh, the last uh, school to get that 2021 commit. And, um, at three months later, now they have a full class. So I really do think that that recruiting class saved Kevin Sumlin. They now rank sixth in the conference. It's the highest recruiting class ranking uh, since the Kevin Sumlin era. And Ryan, I just want to get your thoughts on this. Um, do you think that I'm crazy for thinking that Kevin I, Sumlin is going to stick I, around I, for another I, year? I'm crazy, Jacob, because <laughs> like Kevin Sumlin coming in was 51 and 26 at Texas A&M and the SEC, and like. He was there. He was there for. Uh, he made five bowl games there out of six years, and like he, he recruited like so well. And in the SEC, which is arguably the the toughest conference, he 
he had four or five star guys and 75 four star recruits in six years. And like, and at Arizona so far, this is his third year coming up. He's only, he's only recruited three four star players. I mean, in the Pac 12, like, that's just, that's very hard to, to compete. I mean, at the, at, cause the PAC 12 is, is such a high level conference. And I know that they do have some young players and recruits coming in, but it's from that lower tier of players. And I just don't believe that it's, it's going to be tough with those guys to compete. Just like we talked about with the, with the defense. I mean, yeah, I would have to agree to you that he certainly has a lot to prove, but I mean, I think not only this 2021 class, you know, and I feel like this is one of those classes where it's like, you know, give it, let them play, let them coach with his guys. And, you know, these, these guys in the past years, those weren't the guys that he recruited, but now he has this class of guys. So let him coach these guys. That's kind of what it feels like to me. And it's not just the 2021 recruiting class. I mean, Arizona has already added to its 2022 recruiting class and with some big names as well. Um, You got, Keon Graves, or excuse me, Keon Graves from Chandler, Arizona. He's a wide receiver, three-star. I, I honestly think that he could be more of a four-star. He looks really good. I watched a, a little bit of his film. He, yeah. he, he's an incredible route runner. I think he's a legit wide receiver prospect. And they also got Treshawn Burgo, who, if you're familiar and you live in the Tucson area, you're probably familiar with his name. He's a, he's a gunslinger, probably one of the best quarterbacks in Southern Arizona. And he, he's one of those guys that has – leadership qualities written all over him you know he's he's one of those guys where people want to play for him you know other players are going to want to come to Arizona because he's there so to get him on the recruiting class not only just to get him on the recruiting class but to get him on early as well I think could be huge you know he's already been vocal about wanting to change kind of the stigma and the stereotype of Arizona being a mediocre football program so I think he is just the perfect fit to have on Arizona's recruiting class. I, I agree. Those two names are, are exciting. Um, and it, like you said about, about the history of Arizona football, it's, it's going to be tough. Like for Kevin Sullivan, did it come in with a difficult job and uh, like trying to turn things around because Arizona, like you said, is not, not like known to be in an, a an great uh, football program. And he's trying to change that. It's just like, I, I, don't, I don't know how long like they're going to give him. I mean, like teams like teams like even Arizona State, like uh, USC, like these schools, like are, they're just recruiting at a higher level, and that's what it comes down to. And and all ba- and all the way back for for Kevin Sumlin back when he coached Houston, he was he was good. Like he's been a, a solid head coach. It's just and like with the Arizona, like with that new and improved practice facility, like they have like like uh, I just. It's, I wonder why like more recruits, high level recruits don't want to come here. Yeah, I mean, I would definitely agree. He's, he, de- he certainly has a lot to prove. And I mean, I think it's important to note that every season that someone has coached, his win record has gone down every single year. He has not improved. So, I mean, if we're going by that trend, Arizona could be in a lot, a lot of trouble next year in the season on. But um, I want to switch over to our third topic of the the show. And we've already talked about the defensive side of the ball and all the holes that they're going to have to fill. But what about the offensive side? You know, Arizona lost Khalil Tate and JJ Taylor to the NFL this past season. I mean, Ryan, who do you see as the next guys to kind of replace? I mean, well, it, it all starts with Grant Cannell, the quarterback, because Grant Cannell last year got, I, I feel like it was like an unfair start because he showed at times when he was given the opportunity showed how talented he is but like when you had when you had Tate coming in and Al it was just so hard to manage and that and that was a difficult situation for someone I do agree because you're trying to develop the young player while try to still give a lot of time to a player who's trying to make it in the NFL and further his career but like as I'm talking about with Grant Cannell, like he was ranked recently by Pro Football Focus as the 13th best uh, quarterback in the nation. And that's like, and like people are saying he has like, potential he has is like through the roof. I mean, yeah, I would, I would have to agree. I think Arizona is going to be okay at quarterback. I think Grant Cannell is the future of this team. 
we already saw what he did last year. I mean, the kid's legit, right? He, he tore up UCLA in his first start, and he kind of fits the Noel Mazzoni scheme very well, I think, a, a lot more than Khalil did. So I think they're going to be okay at that position. And as for running back, I think they're going to be okay there as well. I mean, their entire running back core outside of J.J. Taylor is coming back next season. Um, all of them took snaps last season. You know, Gary Brightwell, excuse me, Gary Brightwell, I feel like is really one of those underrated backs. Uh, he was kind of living in the shadow of J.J. Taylor last season. So I think now he'll finally get to emerge as kind of that lead back for Arizona. Um, you've also got Bam Smith, who's an incredible runner. We saw what he can do. Um, Nathan Tilfer made a huge jump from his first two years now to his third year, which is last year. Um, we've seen Michael Wiley uh, featured in the past game a lot as well. So I, I also I think they have a lot of really good running backs. And they also have Frank Brown and Jalen John, who are going to be freshmen this season from the 2020 recruiting class, who I've been heard around that people are talking as them as like the two top guys, right? So and, and, uh, the two top guys in this recruiting class. So, I mean, just to add two more names to that long list of running backs, I, I think they'll be okay for sure. I do. I, I do too. I, I agree with that. I think they're going to, the running back position, I think that's not an area of, of much weakness for them. Um, but um, a team like Arizona, like, I think, I think it hurts a team like Arizona from having the season postponed more than other schools because they're, they're trying to build that chemistry with these younger players. And it's just going to, it's going to be tough because I know they're still, they're doing as much as they can, but when you start and stop, it's, it's going to be very difficult to try to get on that uh, winning side of the uh, page. Yeah, I would definitely agree. Yeah. And I want to, I want to go back to our first topic. I got a little bit ahead of myself and skipped over Brendan Schooler, but I mean, how do you think, do you think that that wide receiver core is going to be okay without him? Or do you think that's another big blow? I think that's a big blow. I mean, they don't have a, I don't really view them as having a clear cut, like, like run, I mean, wide receiver at that position. I mean, they're going to have to just, they're going to have to just rely on, on, as I, as we talked about, uh, Grant Cannell to just get, get them the ball and do his best. And hopefully he can, he can somewhat uh, put the team on his back per se and, and lead this team to where they have the potential to go. Yeah. I mean, I definitely think that was a huge blow for them as well, but I mean, I do, I think they'll be all right. Obviously Brendan probably would have brought in a lot of, you know, experience. He also brings on a lot of size and speed at that slot position that Arizona kind of lacks right now, but they have a lot of names, you know, you can, you can go down the list that they have a lot of guys, but the fact of the matter is, is that none of them, you know, a lot of them are underclassmen and they don't have a whole lot of experience. So I think Brendan would have definitely brought a lot to that wide receiver core, but I, you know, I do think they'll survive a lot more than Colin Schooler losing out on. Yeah, yeah, I, I agree. I mean, it was good to hear the other day in coaches, uh, Coach Summers' press conference. He was, uh, he's, I mean, the things he was talking about, it sounds like they, uh, the stuff they're doing over Zoom and still getting the team connected and involved is, is like up against any school I've seen. So that, that is a positive note too. I mean, real quick, what are your what are your thoughts on kind of Colin and Brendan deciding to uh, go to a school that is more guaranteed, or at least not? I wouldn't say guaranteed, but I mean they're still trying to play a fall season. I mean, can you fault the the guys at all for making that decision, or do you think it's a little bit of ambitious right now? Uh, no, I, I don't fault I don't fault anyone trying to to play and guys that want to maybe get on a better spot like than Arizona and think they might get a better chance somewhere else like Tony Fields and others because with Arizona right now like it's they haven't had like even J.J. Taylor who was very good like he went he went undrafted um so it, it's just hard for it's hard for guys to um to get to get in the uh spotlight in Arizona yeah I mean it's it's interesting to think about that if it weren't for this pandemic the school their brothers would not be transferring. So, I mean, just Arizona just getting hosed there. But, I mean, I think their situations are super different, in my opinion, because the uh, – excuse me, Colin Schooler, we've seen what he can do already, right? You know, he's, he's balled out three, all three years at this uh, – at Arizona. And then Brennan, on the other hand, has been with Oregon for a few years but hasn't really got a whole lot of snaps in. So I think Brennan would have most definitely 
benefited from that extra year as opposed to Colin. But I mean, I, I can't blame them at all for, for wanting to, to play football another year in the fall, because if a fall, like a spring season in football for the NCAA would, would, would it just been a disaster? It would have overlapped with the NFL too much. And I don't think it would have been doable at all. So I can't blame right, them I, at all for that. I think it hurts guys that are in that mid tier, like trying to move on to the NFL maybe later. I think it hurts those guys more because they need to show they're out there every week trying to prove their worth and show that they're worthy to get to that next level. So I, I think it's going to, it's going to hurt them the most. Yeah, I definitely agree. Um, I want to now switch gears to the spring season. If we are going to have a spring season, let's just play pretend here that there is going to be a spring season. It'll most likely be probably six, eight, maybe 10 games, all conference scheduled. I mean, how do you kind of see, do you see Arizona benefiting from a conference only schedule or do you feel like they really could have needed those non-conference schedules to. I, I really, I, 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 um, I think if it was um, Pac-12 conference uh, only, I think it would hurt Arizona because a lot of those teams like, like come in, like it's just, I, like uh, they're so tough to beat like USC, like Utah, all those schools, like, coming in Oregon, like, I just don't think Arizona right now as they as they stand, stand, like have a chance against those higher upper level um, Pac-12 schools. Yeah, totally. I mean, I think the non-conference schedule every year is a great opportunity for Arizona to get a couple of free wins before they uh, get thrown around in the, uh, the Pac-12 conference gauntlet. But um, yeah, I mean, I just don't think they're going to roster wise. I'm not sure they'll compete with some of the, the higher teams. And I think it, it could go very badly to have a full season of, uh, of conference games for Arizona. But I, I mean, we, we talk about how bad this team could potentially be, but there are some bright spots. I mean, we saw what Grant Gannell did last season in the Noel Mazzoni offense. I mean, having another year around that young core and the entire offensive line is going to be back for another year. So I know we talk a lot about how bad this team could be, but there could be some bright spots that could rack up a couple of games for us. But I mean, against, you know, conference games that are obviously uh, against rosters that are a lot more talented than Arizona is, it, it, it could potentially go very bad. Yeah. I mean, the, the, the talent level is it's such a wide cap there. Like it's like schools like Oregon, like those guys like have like every year, like they have so many guys that, that go to either get drafted to the NFL or play in the NFL. Like it, it's going to be like, I just think, I just think, I think there's so many years. I think they're a lot of years away till they can truly compete. And yeah, I mean, the sad part about the whole thing is that Arizona is competing with uh, the same schools when they're recruiting, right? So they go to Southern California, they go to Texas, Florida. You know, all the big name schools are there too. So you know, they're they're fighting with Oregon to get that spot. They're fighting for USC to get a recruit. UCLA. I mean, they're just fighting with the big teams, and it's it's always been hard for them to recruit. So I, yeah, it, it it could be a disaster for sure. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's it's tough. I mean, like it's just it's sometimes I wonder like it's crazy that like a school that recruits on another end on the basketball side they recruit at such a high level and it's just like some of these schools it's just hard for them to trans transfer over to that that uh, other sport. Yeah, so why don't we talk about a little bit of hypothetical matchups? You know, if we do see Arizona playing against other teams, like we were hoping to see them play ASU week one. I mean, how do you think that matchup would have gone down? Because they're also having some some uh, coaching turnovers as well, as well as Arizona. So, I mean, two new coaching staffs kind of going head to head, two young quarterbacks going head to head. I mean, that probably would have been a very fun matchup. How do you kind of see that one out playing? I, th I think I might give the edge to Arizona. I mean, because more of a familiar staff. I mean, Arizona State lost some good players. Like, and just, uh, I'm just, I mean, the one thing, like, um, we keep talking about, which is true, is like, like, Ganell, like, he's the one bright spot on this, at, at this program. I mean, he's such an accurate throw of the football, like, that I, I think, I think we can win more games with him than expected just based on that talent level. Yeah, I was definitely looking forward to uh, Gannell and McDaniels week one, and hopefully we can still see that in the spring. Um, how about, do, I mean, do you think that there's any team in the Pac-12 that Arizona can 
beat soundly. I mean, it, it's pretty tough. I was thinking about it the other day, and I'm looking at all these teams, and it's just like, that's going to be a close game. That's going to be a tough game. I don't know. I mean, do you see any teams that are below Arizona right now? Um, I can't say that I do right now. And, and but one thing that Arizona, well, it's going to it's going to hurt them, even if they do play. I mean, the the big thing with throughout the whole sports world is fans in the stadium. If there's fans and students in the stadium, I think Arizona, as they showed last year, they kept it tight with Washington when they came in until the second half. Like, I think I think with the fans, they could they could stay in games. Yeah, I mean, I, I think they can maybe beat Colorado. I think that's the only team I think is below Arizona. But other than that, I mean, it's going to be an uphill battle either way, which I think could benefit Arizona because, you know, you go out there every single week and you're just like, oh, you know, we're not projected to win. So, you know, let's just go out there and we got nothing to lose type thing, you know, as opposed to some yeah, of these other schools. Awesome. Yeah. Yeah, I, yeah. Teams like that in all sports win all the time because it's hard to get up like – for teams that are traveling here, sometimes it could be hard for them to get up that week because they, they just think they expect to just roll over the Wildcats. But I think I think that could change a little bit. I mean, I, I saw one projection having Arizona going, oh, and whatever, however many games. I, I, I think that's a bit insane. I think, you know, they, they could be a team like Colorado and they can, you know, steal a game from, from somebody. So I think zero wins is a, is a little bit, you know, underselling this team. I think they maybe win like four or five. I mean, it all just depends on how many uh, games we have in the spring. But, I mean, the the reality is, is this team is just not very good. Yeah, ju- just a handful of games that they, they even have a chance it gets back to, to Kevin Sumlin because even if this year, because I think they could give him a y- another year just because the circumstances, like next year, like – like, I mean, I, I don't see them flipping around that quick. So, like, like th- this football program is just not in good hands right now. All oh, right. That's the other thing I think as well is, I mean, if you fire Kevin someone, I mean, who is there to hire right now, right? So it's kind of just like. Yeah, and who would come, and who would also, like, come come here knowing they're, like, like, what, like what's left? Like, it's yeah, not. Yeah, exactly. Like, when they hired Kevin someone a few years ago, like, I was excited and because it was interesting to see somebody like of that level, like of winning like bowl games and competing like at such a high level for a few years. Like I, I was excited, but it's just been a letdown so far. Well, yeah. I mean, that's the other thing too, is, I mean, if you get rid of Kevin Sumlin, you know, that could blow up the entire recruiting class. I mean, you know, guys like Trey Sean are coming into Arizona expecting someone and Mazzoni to be their coaches. And now that they're out, it's kind of just like, well, why would I want to come to Arizona if I was promised one thing and now not? So I think that's the other reason why I think Kevin Sumlin could stick around just because he's tied to these recruits. I mean, do you kind of feel the same way or am I crazy for thinking that he's going to be around? Um, like I said, like I think after next year, I don't think he'll be around. But um, it all gets back like, well, he want to stick around. Like, because I mean, if he's struggling for school, so many years like how many like more years can he take it like at some because yeah. he's used to he's used to competing with teams like Alabama and all those good schools so yeah like it's it's basically yeah at both ends it doesn't I don't see a, a long future yeah I mean it could definitely feel like one of those times where it's just like oh give him another year oh give him another year you know like oh is something happening you know it's, it's just excuse after excuse and at some point you got to pull the plug so I mean I, I it'll be really interesting to see how uh, the future of Kevin someone kind of plays out. Yeah, I mean, on the on the others like, and with the uh, with Arizona's basketball team, like, I I'm not the biggest fan of Sean Miller, and I've, I've called for his job sometimes, but it's also like he's like at like that mediocre level where like they always lose like first round or two in the, the tournament, but like it's at a certain point, like like who's gonna take you to that next level? And it goes for for all the sports. Yeah, I would, I would have to agree. Um, one last thing that I want to get to, do you feel like there is any player on Arizona that could really make the jump this season? I mean, obviously you can talk about Grant Gannell, but is there anybody else on the offensive or defense, defensive side of the ball that you really see could have a breakout season? I see Brightwell because 
he's going to get the bulk of the carries. And I think that they're just going to, they're just going to like, they're going to rush him. Like uh, I would give him 20 or more carries a game. Like I think they should just run it heavy and, um, and also just uh, get some of the young receivers involved with uh, Grant Lee leading the way. And maybe um, you never know if, I mean, they could pull together a few wins, hopefully. Yeah, I, I think Brightwell will definitely be the lead back. But I, like we were talking about earlier, there's just so many options. So I don't think he'll be a guy that's getting 25 plus carries a game just because there's so many, you know, mouths to feed. But yeah, um, I think like a split backfield, yeah, probably yeah. to get everyone involved. I I can see that happening too. I think one per. I, actually, I have two, but I'll start on offense. I think. One person that's really, I think, is going to make the jump next season is Booby Curry. You know, he was Grant Gannell's teammate in high school. They're best buddies, you know. Yeah, this is past freshman season. You know, he didn't do a whole lot. But I think this season he'll really make the jump because I expect him to get a lot more uh, snaps this season with kind of how the depth chart has played out in his favor and now that Gannell is going to be there full time. So I think that tandem is going to work out really well this year. So that's that on the offensive side of the ball. On the defensive side of the ball, I really think Jalen Harris is going to have a real bounce back season. Uh, last year, the defensive line was just extremely thin. We had no choice but to put Jalen Harris back on the line. But his freshman season, when he was an outside linebacker and he was rushing off the edge, he was a force to be reckoned with. I really thought he was going to be one of Arizona's top players in the next year or two. And then, you know, the depth chart kind of played against his favor and we had to put him at defensive end. And, you know, he was invisible last season yeah yeah, I mean he had 56 tackles in his first few years and I think it it does hurt it does hurt players where they're moved around like and and it's just like not having that stability I think that's that that doesn't help anybody yeah and Rhodes has already talked about and Paul Rhodes our defensive coordinator he's already talked about how he wants to put Jalen Harris back at outside uh, linebacker and kind of change the scheme around I mean we'll see how the scheme is now with with Fields and Schooler but Hopefully he can go back to the outside linebacker spot because I think that's where he really, really shined. Yeah, and like, like we got back, like we said before, like him along with the uh, Pandy, like these guys aren't that young. Like they're in their the last like few year, like two years, pretty much. Um, Pandy being a uh, senior, like it's gonna be, it's gonna be uh, like even next year. Like it's just, it's hard to build that that team when when you got guys that are that are just leaving every year and transferring. Yeah, 100%. Um, I think we are running out of time now on this, our very first episode. So I want to go ahead and thank uh, Sam behind the, the uh, scenes for producing this whole thing. And I want to thank Dash Sports TV for doing this. Uh, make sure to follow us on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and TikTok. Yes, we have a TikTok. Go ahead and follow us on all those social media platforms. I mean, I had a lot of fun doing this and uh, I hope to see you guys next week.